Welcome back to another episode of Math for Game Developers. Today we're going to do an interesting problem here. Let's say you have some kind of area here. And in this area, you have a little red particle of dust. It has very little mass, and it's just floating around in the breeze. You see this a lot in video games when you do things like uh, particle systems where you have snow falling or dust in the air or rain or or sparks coming out of the broken ventilator shaft or whatever it is video games have. I don't know. I don't even play video games. Anyway, uh, this dust is being carried along in the wind. And at each point in this grid, you have a different uh, velocity vector that specifies where the wind, what direction the wind is going in. Okay. So I'm drawing some examples here of some different velocity vectors for the wind that the wind can be pointing in, something like this. And so uh, this little moat of dust, this particle is going to be carried along by these velocity vectors. Wherever the velocity vectors point, that's where the, the moat of dust will go. All right. And we want to know what path that mode of dust, that particle, will be traveling. What is the path? Uh, and this is, uh, a this is what differential equations are. So this is a differential equation. And there are many types of differential equations, and this is the type we're solving right here. We have a, um, we have a grid that defines the velocity of a particle at any time if you specify the location of the particle and the current time. So this grid may be changing with time because the wind changes over time, right? Um, but if you know the current time and the current position of this, of this moat of dust, then you can find the velocity. And what we really want is the path. All right, so the solution to the differential equation is a, a, a path through the world. Or you could say it's another equation that specifies that path. Um, and differ all differential equations are different. There's no single way to solve any particular, like, to, to, I'm sorry, to solve all differential equations. Um, and solving differential equations in closed form can actually be quite difficult. Most differential equations are not possible to solve in closed form. Some are, but we're not going to get into that. What we're going to do is we're going to solve it numerically. We're going to trace out this path. Um, before we get to that, I want to I want to show you that we've we've actually seen these differential equations before. If you remember from my integrals video, when you had the acceleration of a of a of an object is equal to negative g, and then we integrated that on both sides. And then with the, the integral of, of acceleration is velocity, and so we get negative gt v equals negative gt. This, oh, I'm sorry, plus the initial velocity. This is actually a differential equation. Because look, v is equal to negative gt. We have a t right here. Okay, we don't have any x's in this equation. But this is a function of, of uh, the position and time of uh, of an object all right so and and it's equal to the velocity of the object so this looks like that and this looks like this so this velocity specification that we were using before to to describe the the movement of of some object actually is a differential equation now how did we solve that differential equation you'll remember that we had the um the initial velocity i'm sorry the initial position of an object and uh, uh, that was the position of the object at the initial time. And we had an initial velocity, and that was the velocity of the object at the initial time. And then we said that the, um, the first, so, that, so x1 is the position at the next time. Let me go to another color here. x1 is the position of the object at the next time. And then that would be the position at the last time plus the velocity at the last time 
times uh, delta t, which is the change in time between, uh, so let's see, t1 minus t0 equals delta t. So to get a refresher on this, you can, um, you can watch some of my other videos. There's the game loop video from very early in the series, and then there's the integrals video that will give you a, a, a quick recap on all of this stuff. And then we just integrated, I'm sorry, we just repeated this process over and over and over. And for a more general formula, you might say x at the next time step is equal to x at this time step plus the velocity at this time step times delta t. Um, and then we did this again for velocity. I'm not going to go into the velocity one here because we don't need it. We can calculate vn at any time because that's what this formula is right here. Okay, so I'm going to rewrite it. We're going to use the same uh, method of solving this differential equation as we used before. There's really nothing new here. Okay, plus f of xn tn times delta t. So all I'm doing is I'm substituting this v for this f right here. And so we're seeing a more general way of solving differential equations numerically. Instead of finding, so if you'll remember, we continued on here and we found a, um, a closed form solution for this differential equation, which was negative one half gt squared plus v naught t plus x naught. That was closed form, but sometimes you have very complex uh, differential equations, very complex f's, and you can't solve them in closed form. And so we solve them numerically using this iterated, uh, iterated method right here. And this has a name, it's called, I'm not sure if I've said the name before, it's called Euler's method, Euler's method. And it is actually the most basic method of solving a differential equation. Over the next few videos, we are going to find many more methods that are better than Euler's method. Euler's method is the simple one, and it's the one we used in the time step video. Um, but we're gonna find a lot more that do the job a lot better. So let's go to the, the code section of the video and we'll see this in action. So here we have a position, a, a particle position, that, um, that we are going to do integration on. And here's our formula. We, we query the velocity field at the current position and time. And uh, this is the equivalent of our x f, f function from the previous part of the video. That's the differential equation that returns the velocity, okay? And then, as before, we multiply it by delta t, and then we add it to the previous position, and we get a new position. And we assign our new position, and then we push it onto a list of all the historical positions so that we can draw a line through the world. So let's take a look at that we'll run it there and you can see this black grid of of slowly moving arrows that is our that's a visualization of our velocity field and you'll see that the red cube is always following those black lines it's always going in the direction that the black lines are going and eventually it will settle into a nice tight um, curve here over time but there's a problem that uh, this, we so we used, I'll show you, we used dt right here, which is delta t, which is the time that the previous frame took to, to render. Um, and we use that as part of our calculation, but this changes every frame, it, it's variable. And so what can happen is if we have a very long frame, for, for whatever reason, maybe the game uh, it takes too long to do a certain task, or maybe the maybe the OS um, decides to steal our resources for no good reason. For whatever reason, this DT could rise to an unacceptably high level, uh, and then you're going to have a problem. And I'll show you what problem that will be. Uh, I've I've rigged it up so that when I press the right mouse button. Uh, it will simulate a hitch in like a frame hitch, like a very long frame because something took too long. And I'm gonna press it now and we can see what happens. There we go. 
every time we have a frame hitch, our simulation goes wacky. You can see that red guy moving around probably where he shouldn't be moving. Like we had we had settled into a steady state and now we're we're getting whacked out of it. So our solution is wrong because of these frame hitches. So let's see what we can do about that. I'm going to cancel this. Uh, I have some code over here that we're going to use. Uh, so this is, we're going to fix our time step. H is a special variable that is always 1 over 60. We're going to do this 60 frames per second. And I have a special um, particle time variable that keeps track of a, like it's a special simulation time that represents uh, the particles simulation, which we're going to do separately from our uh, from the games time. It's going to follow pretty closely with the games time. We always add H to it until it gets close enough to the game time. Okay, so we're always going to be doing our time steps, a fixed time step um, of one sixtieth of a second. And we're going to do it for as many times as we need to to recover the current time. Uh, all right, so then everything else here is the same. We multiply times our velocity field. We add it to the old position. And there's one more thing I got to do. I got to turn rendering of this guy on. So that's it. And we'll run it again. And now we also have a little green guy. And you can see red and green, they're almost the same. There's a, there's a section right here where they're different. Um, but they're pretty close. They track pretty close to each other. Unless I frame hitch. And then you can see where green was trucking along in the regular path, but red didn't. Let me, let me wait a moment for them to get back to the steady state so that we can see what's going on here. Wait for them to get closer together. They're pretty close together now. And green is tracing out this steady state path until there is a frame hitch. Green continues on the steady state path while red, the variable frame rate simulation, gets knocked off the steady state path. So this is called fixing your time step and it's the method that is um, typically used to solve this simulation error. So good. Um, next time we are going to start learning more ways of solving simple, uh, simple differential equations like this one. See you then.